Well, here we are, and I want to show you about how the top of this can looks. Obviously, when the government issued this can, it did not have the stack on it. It basically was a straight lid that sat on top of the can, locked down with these handles, as you can see. But what I've done is real simple, and I will put it together and you will see how it works, but for right now I want to take each component so you understand. What I did was I actually cut the lid two-thirds to one-third, and the reason for that is so I could put a hinge on it. Now what will happen is when this lid sits on the can, the back half will never have to come off the can. And as you can see, it, it holds or houses the stack, which will then go all the way up through the roof and vent out the smoke. Well, you don't want to have to constantly pull off the top, number one, to feed it the fuel, and number two, you don't want to have to constantly readjusting your stack because you're pulling the top off of the can and having to play to put wood into the can. So what I've done is very simple. I've just simply put this hinge in, allowing me to put the wood in, shut the lid, and now the wood burns. And the stack stays permanent. If you notice, on the stack, I've got a um, damper. And the damper, well, there are many theories that I saw on YouTube on which you could make them, but realistically, you can purchase them for very, very cheap. And this is what they look like. And it's so cheap, you can get them in various sizes. I think this cost me a whopping $3 to get. And you can, like I said, they're various sizes. So depending on how big you want your stack, 3 inch, 4 inch, 5 inch. I don't think you could go much more than 5 inch, though, uh, if you do the method in which I'm looking at right now. But what I've done, so you have a better understanding, is... Essentially, I have taken a piece of metal and I, have, well, on the lid itself, I have cut a three inch circular hole with a three inch hole saw into the lid. Then I've taken this piece of metal and I've cut a four inch hole in it. And I have put this, this um, um, galvanized lip basically uh, again I don't know the technical term for it but it is in your local Home Depot Menards uh, home improvement stores and it's there for stove uh, stove venting and it has these little tabs underneath so when I put this over the four inch hole it has a flange to cover the hole and the little tabs you bend them under the hole of the metal the sheet metal which you could see is this square green I have a square green frame here that's separate if I were to unbolt these eight bolts this thing would pop out you would see you would see the metal let me show you here what it looks like from the reverse now while we have this let me take this moment to explain while we have this showing you the reverse I just want to show you something when the can comes brand new, it has a rubber molding that goes around here. That is to keep a watertight seal onto the can. That must be removed. You definitely don't want fire and rubber to come together. But more importantly, there is another layer of metal that is uh, actually welded, spot welded. You can see the spot welding marks right here. And that is by far the ugliest and not so much fun part about this project. Essentially, here's what it looks like when you, after you remove it. The way I remove it is I take an old wood chisel. And I grind it so that I got a nice edge. And with a ball peen hammer, I turn around and I break each spot weld. And then I start peeling this metal back. And as you can see, eventually, it starts bending, 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 and I rip them off. Sometimes they come off pretty, sometimes they come off a little shattered. But 
nonetheless, this has to come off in order for you to have a nice surface in which to work on from the inside, as you can see, and also to have, if you want, a cooking surface on the top of your lid because you won't get the heat coming to it as uh, if you have that extra piece of metal. So remember, rubber gasket and this extra piece of metal have to come off. Now getting back to the, um, the stack, then what I did was once I pulled those tabs back onto this piece of metal, then I put the metal on top of the lid, bolt it down, and now it isn't going to go anywhere as you can see. There needs to be a transition and a place to put your damper, so that's where this section comes into. And this happens, I don't know if you can see, it says four, so symbolizing four inches. This is where this section would come in, and this is pretty simple. What I do then, if you could see how it's all uh, crimped, and it's crimped here. Now, you just take and you put this onto there, and you have this section nice there, and you have your dampening ability. So, at this point, what then happens is, I don't know if you can see, but these are, this is what I would use for stacking. Now, I bought this, and you can get this through a couple different outfitters. It is what they call stovepipe, and it's designed for it to go into each, each unit, each section, and this happens to be 14 inches. And the reason why I chose 14 inches is because my box is 17 inches and it literally can fit into my box for storage. But the idea here is that they each go into one another and now I have six sections that are all stacked within this, this much pipe. So at the end of the day, six, six, six sections, I'm not going to show you all six sections, I've painted three of them. I've taken and I've painted three because those are what are outside the tent and the other three are in their galvanized metal looking form. At the, at the very top, what has to come out, what actually comes out at the top is real simple. You need a spark arrestor. A spark arrestor is very important because what you don't want is any sparks coming back down on your tent. And so you could get various types, but this is probably the most portable, easiest to maintain. Uh, it's a spark arrestor. It actually looks like, um, it looks like a bag. I don't know if you could see, and that would go over the pipe. And then this is sealed at the top. Sealed here, sealed on the sides and at the top, and on the bottom, it just goes over the pipe. I'm gonna put it like this, so you can kind of get an idea, but that's at the end of the stack, at the end of six sections of stack, it would look like that. And the sparks would come up, they would get trapped or dispersed in here before they could get a potential chance to burn your tent. So that's it for pretty much for the top of the can and what its contents of the top has and how I designed it. Now I'm going to put the top on top of the can so you can see some of the um, uh, concept in terms of how I want to feed the fire and how it would look together. So stand by and we'll come right back to you.